and I legit thought that was an actual professor and I was like oh my god that's so cool and then realized that no he is a fictionalized character Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and we are of course at the start of another weekly read and vlog. This week I've kind of got three-ish books that I want to read physically however I am already in the middle of well not even in the middle of I've just started an ebook. I started it yesterday at work and it's not surprising that I'm reading an ebook. I think we're kind of used to the fact that I read a lot of ebooks now um, especially at work it makes it a lot easier. This particular ebook is a fan fiction and I've never read any fan fiction not because I think it's bad it's just not been something I've interested in. So fan fiction in case you don't know is basically where someone decides to write something based on a book that they've loved or a film or a tv show and they decide to write either a continuation, a spin-off, maybe different people being in relationships to what was actually like originally written or seen on tv and then have it out on the internet for everyone to read. And I've never really been interested in it before it's not something that I've ever thought oh you know what actually I've really enjoyed this let me go find other versions however I was recently watching a video by the book Leo so Leone and she was talking about this particular piece of fan fiction and the way she was talking about it made me so intrigued to pick it up and so I decided to and that is Manacord and this is by Sen Lin Yu I'm really sorry I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly this is a Harry Potter fan fiction. So this is what would happen if Lord Voldemort won and Harry Potter is dead but cross it with The Handmaiden's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I've not read The Handmaiden's Tale, I've not watched it either, it is a tv series but I know of it, I know of the themes and everything in that. Wow this is so dark, it is so dark. It's also Draco Malfoy and Hermione Granger romance. You know what, I'm enjoying it a lot actually. Let me see, where am I up to? I'm up to chapter 11 and this is actually really dark but really interesting so we're following Hermione's perspective and Hermione has been captured after the battle that's gone on it's been going on for years a lot longer than in the book and everyone that she knows has passed away tortured etc um, and she has been tortured herself and now with this whole regime that's now in place which is where the Handmaid's Tale influence comes in she is now with Draco Malfoy in his manor um, and having to deal with a lot of stuff that comes from that. Do check your trigger warnings, it is dark, I'm interested, I kind of wish I had a physical copy of this book, I, it makes me tempted to learn book binding just so I can have my own version of this book because I'm enjoying it that much. I have a long way to go though, this is quite a long book, I'm on page 289 of 2914 but this is book like phone pages so it, it's not as many as that but I do think the bigger versions is like 700 pages or something it's just because I'm reading on my phone everything's a lot smaller but yeah I'm enjoying it so that's what I'm going to be reading for the next few days because I am at work until Thursday I have work Sunday to Thursday basically so I'm at work for the next five days so that's what I'm going to be reading at work however I do want a physical book for when I'm at home and that's where the three different options come in so the first one is a non-fiction book, A Life on Our Planet by David Attenborough and I am doing a sort of buddy read with this on my Discord channel. I'm really pleased that I'm doing a buddy read with this because I think non-fiction, especially something like this, I'm not sure if it's going to be a bit dense so I feel like it's going to be really fun to be able to talk about it and read little bits of it at a time but this isn't going to be something that I know I can read like massive chunks of it. So I'm thinking that I will be reading like little bits of this each day after work, maybe not today maybe start this Monday that's what I've said so I think that's what I'm gonna do from Monday is just start little bits of this I also know that I'm not gonna to want to read that like just before bed or anything because it's gonna take a lot of concentration so the other possibility is also the ladies of Grace Addy and other stories by Susanna Clark this is a short story collection one that I've been so excited to read yet also so upset because I don't want to have no Susanna Clark books on my TBR anymore because I love her writing this one I think is gonna be lovely to read a short story before bed. I think that's just going to be a great way of doing it. I don't know how many stories there are in here but this is a beautiful 
illustrated edition of it and I'm just in love. Let's see. Yeah, there's not loads of stories. There's, they look to be about 30-ish pages long each, some of them smaller, but I think this is going to be really lovely to read before bed. So I think that's going to be the plan is that I read the Dramione. It's, it's pronounced, it's said Dramione if you have Draco and Hermione. Dramione romance fan fiction. Anyway, because I'm going to be reading that at work, then thinking to read these two physically after work. That's the plan. And then because I have the weekend off, I'm thinking to start my read of The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. But I want to do this as an immersive read where I listen to it and read it at the same time because I feel like that's the only way I'm going to get through this book. As much as that's what all the plans are, we don't actually know what's going to happen because I have been notoriously bad at sticking to my TBRs at the minute. And I'm really hoping that May sets off to a really good start because April... I don't know, it just wasn't the month for me. So I'm really hoping that May is like, yes, this is the month and we're gonna get loads of reading done. It's gonna be really good. The one book I know I'm definitely reading this week is the fan fiction. The rest of this, I'm hoping to get to, hoping to get through, but we'll see what actually happens. If I'm really not feeling it, I'm not gonna stop myself from mood reading because me forcing myself to stick to TBRs at the minute just isn't working, but we're gonna give it a try. And I'm sorry about the lighting today. It's a cloudy yet sunny day, so it's a bit all over the place. Anyway, I have been rambling for long enough at the start of this video. So I'm going to start getting ready for work because I have to go soon. I hope you are all doing well. Let me know what you've been up to, what you've been reading, all the usual things and I'll catch up with you soon with what physical book I've actually started and more thoughts on the fan fiction that I'm reading which is really good and I don't know why I'm so surprised at that because I'm sure there are amazing fan fictions out there you'll have to let me know if you've read any if there's like particular types that you like anyway right I'm still rambling I've got to go and yeah catch up with you soon as I've already said as we know because I can't stop talking We are back to very raggedy looking Kirsten, but I've just finished work and I'm in my PJs ready to relax. Actually, I can't even relax because after this, I need to go edit for a little bit and cook and then relax. That being said, we have reading updates. I have made quite a bit of progress with Manacled. Page 975. So that's a lot of progress. There's a couple things that I'm enjoying about this and also not enjoying about this book. And I'm trying to do this update quick because I forgot to swap out the battery. So... We're gonna see how long this battery lasts. The things that I like about this, we're at a point where we're seeing Drac Dracula, it's not Dracula, it's Draco. Oh my God. Draco and Hermione are together an awful lot. And Hermione has somehow managed to seal away parts of her memories so that Voldemort can't have access to them. And now those memories are starting to come back. And that I'm finding really interesting, really loving all of that. However, I'm not really loving the repetitiveness of this story. There are parts that seem really drawn out, especially that drawn outness up to the flashbacks that I'm now getting, which I really appreciate that we now have the flashbacks. And I understand why parts of this were so drawn out. I think the author's done a really good job of exploring trauma, recovering from trauma, going through it, the different things it affects. Agoraphobia is a massive thing in this book and I think that's explored really interestingly. I can't say whether it's done well or not because it's not something I suffer from but I thought it was done well and it's talked about. It's not seen as what you can sometimes get in books as like it's mentioned and then it's brushed under the carpet or she recovers really quickly. It's not like that at all. It's an actual fear, ingrained fear that she is struggling to deal with and you're seeing how it impacts her 
life. Lots of other things, like this book is very traumatic, there's a lot of depictions of bodily harm and things like this, so again, check your trigger warnings, but there are parts of this that is feeling very drawn out, at the minute it's okay, but because of the nature of the flashbacks, some parts of that I'm seeing like paragraphs have been literally like lifted and copied into places and you know why that's been done, but I'm still finding it a bit tedious at times. And there are a couple of spelling errors or missing words, and not so much spelling errors, more missing words or grammatical things, but that's just because I'm really analytical and I pick up on those sort of things. That being said, I'm still enjoying this book, it's still an easy read, especially with being on early mornings, it's something easy that I can just focus on. I like how this book basically replaces the last Harry Potter book and I like that. It works really well because you have series of events that are spoken about that happened in the first six books but you don't have that last book. That book obliterate, wipe it from your mind, that book didn't happen and instead this has all gone on and you do get flashbacks to the end and how things got to where they are now. Although I was tempted to DNF it just before the flashbacks because I was finding it really drawn out and there's parts about pregnancy and I'm, yeah, I'm not there for that. Like I don't, I'm not interested in things like that. So I was really tempted to put this book down and I think if we go back to that and there being a lot of emphasis on it all, then I may put it down, I don't know. But I'm enjoying the flashbacks. The flashbacks are interesting. The first part of this book was good. I mean, technically I'm still in the first part, but the very, very first part that I read, I liked. And my camera battery is flashing, so I'm gonna have to change that out. Hang on. Okay, we're back. Obviously things might be slightly adjusted, but hopefully it's all okay. Because I do have two other books to talk to you about that I started, and they are the books that I was talking about starting, which I'm quite impressed with myself. So the first one is A Life on Our Planet by David Attenborough, and I am enjoying this book actually a lot more than what I thought I was going to. This is so much more accessible. I've been able to read up to page 77. We're up to 1997. So this one started off with an amazing introduction, really powerful, really gripped you, then goes into looking back over David Attenborough's life and the things that led him up to the point that he's in. And so we start off when he's a child actually, because part one is his witness statement, so it's basically him telling his life. And that's in 1937 and at the start of each part you get the world population, the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and the remaining wilderness on the planet it and you're seeing how all of that changes across this time period and it's not even that long and as I've been reading this there have been things that I realise how quickly things have happened that I never even thought about and it's just devastating and kind of scary. I am actually starting to tab this as well. I wasn't sure if I was going to, to be honest, but I am. I'm sticking with blue tabs, to be fair, because blue is on the book. But I have the light blue for quotes that just are lovely, really well done, that impact me in some way. I think they're just amazing. And then I'm going with a darker blue for things that are just so devastating and heartbreaking. So like there was a part about whales, learning about the impact of whaling and what's happened to them. It was just oh, heartbreaking to read, absolutely heartbreaking. So those bits I'm marking in blue. And this is, this is a hard book to read in terms of just seeing what we've done to the planet and the effect that we're having on it is just horrible but at the same time it's like I'm realising what is actually going on because I live in a bubble, I don't pay attention to the news, I don't read newspapers, I don't look at that sort of stuff, I focus on my books and booktube and if the information is not coming to me from that then I'm not getting it. And so reading non-fiction I feel is really important for me because I don't pay attention to what's going on. This is just making me realise how much I've actually missed, things that I just never even realised how recent they have been and it's just, yeah really good book, really really enjoying this and like I say really accessible. The writing style in this is feeling like I'm being told a story while at the same time getting information about our planet which I think is a great mix. There's also photos throughout this of different photos at points during David Attenborough's life whether it's animals that he saw or things that he was doing. He talks about his time with the BBC and the things that they were doing. I think it's really good. I'm really excited to get into the rest of it though. The next part is going to be focusing on maybe what we can do. Yeah, so we have a part three vision for the future and I think that will be really interesting. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this. And then I also attempted to start The Ladies of Grace Addy by Susanna Clarke. And I say attempted to because I literally read the introduction. So I read three pages 
that was all I read. I was so tired. It was nine o'clock in the evening and I was, it, no, it was earlier than that. I think it was like half eight and I was exhausted. I was absolutely exhausted and I could not focus on this book and I wanted to read the first short story, which is The Ladies of Grace Alley and I love that this edition is illustrated. Is my camera focusing? That's absolutely gorgeous. So I love that it's illustrated and the first short story is only 30 pages, but I couldn't do it. <laughs> I was so tired. I could not do it. I actually thought that the introduction to this, it's an introduction by Professor James Sutherland, director of the C side fairy studies at the University of Aberdeen and I legit thought that was an actual professor and I was like oh my god that's so cool so this professor's gone out of his way to find these short stories that Susanna Clarke's created and put them all together in this I, that's awesome like I love that and then realized that no he is a fictionalized character and he is just collecting these stories from his world and putting them together in this collection I was that tired it actually took me reading the whole of the introduction and thinking about it for a little while before I realised that's what it was because I was that tired. So yeah I decided you know what this isn't the time to read this book I'm clearly too tired for this let me put it down. So hopefully today we'll get through the first short story but I would love to read some more of this I think it's really good really accessible as I've already said so I'd like to maybe get up to part two no idea where that is oh okay part two's here what page is that? 105. Yeah, so if, uh, that's not too bad. If I read the next like 30 pages of this and 30 pages of that, that could be doable. But like I said at the start of this, I do need to edit. So I'm going to edit a little bit and then we'll get on with reading and see what we actually get done. That's it for now. It feels like it's been ages since I've spoken to you, but it hasn't been. It's just been a busy couple of working days and I have two more working days left, which is going to be great. I'm rambling. I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop. We're gonna stop. We're gonna edit, we're gonna read, we're gonna do stuff. I'll talk to you in a bit, as I've said several times. I don't know why you put up with this, but thank you so much. Anyway, right, goodbye. <laughs> officially off work for the next few days and I'm so excited. I'm actually really pleased how this new roster works for me because it works out that every few weeks I get five days off in a row which is perfect for helping me out with getting YouTube sorted so I can use these five days to get so much filming done which is the plan after this update and then lots of editing and just being able to catch up with everything so then it makes my life easier so that the days that I'm working the only thing that I'm doing for YouTube is these vlogs so it'll be so much better much better work life balance I think that being said this afternoon I am actually going out for lunch with one of my friends and I'm very excited it's gonna be really good so I'm going to film as much as I can do this update and then head out for lunch and I think it's gonna be good however those clouds are looking like it's gonna rain so umbrella will be needed anyway this was a really long rambly update that hasn't even had any books in it yet so let's get to that I've made some progress with a life on our planet I have the pen stuck in the book and I am really enjoying this one I am now up to part three so I haven't read loads since I've last updated so this is page 125 I have to admit yesterday I didn't read any of this book day before that did I only read a little bit yeah yeah no that's right so yesterday I haven't read any any of this book I do plan on reading more today though I am still enjoying it the last section was actually terrifying to read though so part two what lies ahead was 
a very scary part to read because it is David Attenborough's predictions of what's going to happen in the next few decades. Um, so it starts off with 2030s, 2040s, 2050s, and then it jumps to 2080s. And it's just terrifying to think that all of these things could potentially happen especially if we keep on the sort of track that we're going on. I'm hoping that the rest of this book is going to be a little bit more hopeful in terms of what we can do to try and stop all of that. Like it, this book has been fascinating to learn so many things. Like I know I've said that already but I've just learned so much from this book and I really have enjoyed it even though that last section was terrifying. I think it's kind of like an eye-opening thing that people need. And so this bit I'm hoping it does say a vision for the future, how to rebuild the world. So it'll be really interested to see what comes up in that. So yeah, this is good. Terrifying but good. And like I said, still extremely well written, still find it quite accessible and everything that is talked about that is a bit more scientific is explained really well, especially as someone that got no further than a GCSEs with science, like it's not my thing. Then we'll carry on with the physical books. I have read a little bit more of The Ladies of Grace Adieu. Again, I haven't read any more of this. I didn't read any of it yesterday. I have done a good chunk, I think. I'm now up to Mr. Simonelli of The Flower Widower and I'm trying to show you this and it's not focusing. Hang on, beautiful, absolutely love it. This book is filled with absolutely amazing illustrations. I'm loving it, but I've read quite a few little short stories now. Feel like proper fairy tales, like I'm reading a Grimm's fairy tale, which I always reference back to because that's the most fairy tales, like original fairy tales I've read is from the Grimm's collection. It does, it follows those same repetitive uses that are done within a fairy tale. So like generally there'll be like three things that a person has to overcome or the, th the number three is very important like they do the same thing three times or they say the same thing three times or it just for some reason that's very important but you can see that in this book make connections to other fairy tales that I've heard about and I like it I'm really really enjoying it so I think in this I've got how many stories have I got left I've only got four left so this is definitely going to get finished I've really enjoyed it it's a book that in all honesty is not long so you could just sit down and read it in a day if you wanted to. However, with short story collections, I don't actually like doing that. I like to take my time with it and to break it up with things. This is just, I don't know, I'm just really enjoying it. It's very good. I think, what's been my favorite story so far? Maybe Mrs. Mab. I liked Mrs. Mab. That was very interesting. The way it's written kind of felt like, I wanna say like a Jane Austen thing, but done in Susanna Clarke's amazing way. And I can't really explain it more than that, but it was just a lot of things that I really enjoyed. I think my least favorite so far has been on Licorice Hill. I loved the actual story and what it was doing. I thought that was really good. And the way it's written is great, but I struggled with it a little bit. And I think that could just be because I was reading it of an evening before going to bed after work, being up early. Tired, basically, is what I'm saying. But this was written incorrectly and it's meant to be. So like says is instead of S-A-Y-S -S, was written S-A-Y-Z. A lot of the words were done phonetically. So how you hear them and not how you write them. Because of that and because of how tired I was, it took me longer to read. But I think it was very clever and I understand exactly why it was done. It was kind of witty and sarcastic. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. Although saying that, the actual story of the Ladies of Grace Addy was very good as well. Basically, I'm enjoying this. I think it's really good, really enjoying it and um, I will be continuing continuing on this evening. And then of course we have my ebook and I keep thinking to myself I'm almost done and I'm really, really not. I was literally thinking to myself yesterday, oh I could easily finish this up and I'm still not close to the, like I'm close to the end but not close to the end if that makes any sense. I've still got 600 pages left and I guess they're only 600 pages of this but I I'm conflicted about this book because I want to read it because I actually really am enjoying the dynamic between Hermione and Draco and my favourite part of this book has been the flashbacks. Thought they were absolutely fantastic. However, as I said, there is a lot of moments where the same scene has happened that we've already seen and just cut and paste. And that, that was annoying. So I flicked through a lot of those pages and it does feel drawn out. And I get why it was because it was a whole year that was going over or like just over a year and 
I like the fact that it wasn't just time jumped to a year later we actually saw the progress between Hermione and Draco and their relationship develop and all of this and I think it was done very well and it was slow for a reason but at the same time it was very slow and there were certain points where I was really feeling it and now we're back to present time and I feel like I'm not going to enjoy it as much I just don't think I'm going to connect to this ending and so part of me is like do I just stop now or do I push through and try and continue and I, I can't decide. I think it's going to take me another couple of days of intensely reading it and considering that that was the only thing I read yesterday and I'm still not near the end and I can feel myself losing interest, I may just put it down because I feel like this isn't a book I'm going to reread. It did what I wanted to for my early shifts. It gave me something really easy and addictive to read. And that's it. That is me done. So I'm going to get to filming a wrap up because I haven't actually done that yet. And that's due out before this video. So I'm going to get to filming that and then catch up with you soon. And I will decide whether I'm going to carry on with Manacord or not. I might maybe try another chapter. The chapters are really long in this and then see how I'm feeling because I feel like we're just, it's just, repetitive it's so repetitive and I get it why it's repetitive but it's just not working for me anyway right I've rambled a lot I'm pretty sure this is going to be edited to high heaven because of the amount of crap I was saying anyway like I said I've got to get to filming so stop procrastinating let's get on with it and I will catch up with you soon maybe tomorrow if we've made some good reading progress you never know have to wrap up this vlog and also I've got a bit of book haul because of course I never stick to the whole I'm gonna slow down on book buying because I'm overwhelmed with my TBR yeah that never works never ever works so on Friday I was going out for lunch with my friend and of course we popped into the local bookstore there I really love this bookstore it's really cute and lovely and I'm not gonna be able to get to go as often as I was because I no longer work there well, near there, I decided to get a book. I went in with the intention of not to buy a book and that did not hold up to the point where I actually bought two books. I mean, they're both books I did actually want. So we have this one, which is The Complete Fairy Stories of Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde is the person that wrote The Picture of Dorian Gray and I love that book. And ever since I realized he has some fairy stories, I have been on the hunt for this book and they had it. So of course I was not going to leave it behind. It's also illustrated my it's just lovely. I love it. So I'm very excited to read this, especially because this year I am wanting to read a lot of fairy tale and folklore inspired stories. So reading Oscar Wilde's is going to be a really fun experience. So this is a collection of short stories, which is something that I like anyway. I'm not sure how many stories are in here. 10 stories, which is quite nice. And it's been collected across a few years. So the collection of stories is from 1888 to later on, which I think is really nice that we've got a complete collection of the stories. And then I also picked up Oscar Wilde's Only Doll People Are Brilliant at Breakfast, and this is a small little black classic. I really like these. I've spoken about them quite a lot with testing out an author's writing to see if you like it, but also some short stories that they wrote are only available in these. So like Mary Shelley's Matilda is only available in this that I have seen. So I love picking these up and this was £2. So I'm very happy to have this as part of my collection. I'm very much going to be slowly collecting these as I find them. I'm not really sure what this one is about, 
but I don't really mind. I think it's going to be a fun time regardless because I do like Oscar Wilde's writing. So that was a very Oscar Wilde heavy day. But lunch was really good, really enjoyed the food, so that was great. What did I do Saturday? Saturday I didn't do loads. I had a massive headache. I was going to go and edit in a coffee shop, but it was really busy and I just wasn't feeling it, so I didn't. I gave up on that. But yesterday we went to cinema, so myself and my partner went to cinema, and oh my god, the film that we saw, I'll insert a picture, was so, so lovely. It was like a Studio Ghibli film. The animation was fantastic, and there was this one part which actually made me cry, and it's to do with a cat, and it was just this one line, and that was it. I was gone, I was done, and then for a good long bit afterwards, even just thinking about it, because my partner's like, why were you crying? What got to you and I was trying to tell him and every time I tried I just started crying again and I was like I can't <laughs> I actually can't um but yeah I loved it it was a really really nice film and that was a good time and of course we went into Forbidden Planet like we normally do when we get time and I did go in there looking for some manga but they didn't have the volumes that I want to get so unfortunately that wasn't possible but I then did see some books and I originally just went in to look at the manga and if they had it I was like great I'll get them if they don't then I won't get anything and of course I was lying to myself because I picked up two books I was actually debating between four I managed to whittle it down to two so the first one is The Cleaving by Juliet E. McKenna and this one is a retelling of King Arthur the Arthurian legend that goes alongside that and we've got this perspective from the four women that surrounded him at the time so you've got Morgana, Genevieve and there's also two other women that I haven't heard of before so I'm really interested to see how this is going to go because we're seeing it from the female perspective it literally says that these four women are blamed for the troubles which befell Arthur and Merlin by the chronicles of oh by the chroniclers chroniclers of Camelot. In truth, they were women with their own powers and destinies whose stories became entwined with the legend of the once and future king. They were not content to be pawns in men's games of rivalry and ambition. Supporting each other, they sought a different future for Albion. I'm very excited to give this one a try and honestly, it was the cover that caught my attention because I think it is absolutely stunning. I need to take that sticker off so you can see. Yeah, we'll do that afterwards because that's, that's going to be a bit harder um but yeah I was really really excited I haven't seen anyone talking about this one Arthurian retellings aren't always my favorite like I've tried a couple I haven't really got on with them but I have high hopes for this one I think because it's going to be so much more witchy and the cover like it was the cover that did it so yeah that's that one you'll have to let me know if you've read that one because I put up a poll on my Instagram and everyone was saying no so it'd be very intriguing and then the other book is actually a book that was on my anticipated releases and that's Our Hideous Progeny and this is by C.E. McGill and this is a Frankenstein inspired retelling we're following Frankenstein's daughter finding out what happened because it's all a bit mysterious and they're going from there now what really sold this to me because I was happy to wait however it's two pound off plus I was then looking at this edition Ugh, the end papers are just stunning and it also has foiling on the actual hardcover so those things sold it for me because I was like you know what I'm happy to wait for paperback for a lot of things especially if there's nothing on the hardback there's no really good end papers then I'm more than happy to wait for the paperback version but it had all of those things and it had two pound off so I decided to get it especially because I do love a good Frankenstein retelling like retellings are one of my favorite things so this is what we've got so that's what I ended up being two retellings actually that was a good time I really enjoyed it but reading wise so I can't remember if I told you I finished Manacled or whether I was almost at the end of it but I have I finished that I can honestly say I'm never going to reread this I know I started off with saying that I would have liked a physical copy I'm glad I don't have one it's one of those things because it's fan fiction I don't want to be critical of the actual writing because certain things that were missed so like connecting words that are missing grammatical mistakes things like that that's something that an editor does so the fact that this is fan fiction it's not had an editor so I can kind of like understand that and I'm not criticizing that but I did find it about 400 pages too long. So it works out that this book is about 870 pages and I think you could have cut it in half and the plot would have been so much more succinct and would have been a lot more gripping that I think it would have been so much better. Like I loved the idea of this book but I didn't love the execution in terms of just how repetitive it was. That was that one. But it did work for what I needed which was a light easy read while I'm at work. 
so that's fine. And then I have finished The Ladies of Grace Adieu and this was really really good. I really enjoyed the short story collection. I think my favourite was Tom Brightwind. That was a really fun story plus I made a lot of connections to other books. So there's one part where in a footnote it mentions Lady Wilde which just reminded me of Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies and I loved that connection and loved seeing whether Heather Fawcett had the idea of the name from this collection and she does say that Susanna Clarke was an influence so potentially and we also had a mention of four princesses whose names were the four princesses from here, like the four women. I don't know whether they're princesses or not in here, but they were told as being princesses in The Ladies of Grace Adieu, and it's the exact same names. So I loved that little connection to Arthurian legend, and that was just really fun, especially to pick up on, and I only picked up on it because I read the back of this. I love it when little things like that connect together. So this was fantastic, I really, really enjoyed it was such a delight to read. I love Susanna Clarke's writing style, it was just everything I love, absolutely everything, beautiful. I'm so sad I now have no more books of hers that I haven't read, so the minute she publishes something you can guarantee I will be running out to get it. The other book I was reading this week is A Life on Our Planet by David Attenborough, and I haven't finished it. I hoped I would, but I decided to not rush read this one, especially because this end part is all about rewilding the planet, so what we can do to rectify the damage that we have done. Um, and I'm now up to page 147, Rewilding the Seas. And I have enjoyed this book. It's been really informative. I loved the first part in seeing his life and the things that he did and I loved all of that. And then the second part was terrifying with what we've done, the damage we've done to our planet. And I think this last bit is going to be really interesting but it's a lot more science heavy in this last bit to explain how the things that we can do can make a positive impact on the planet. Definitely will be continuing on with this one but took a couple of days break. I'm kind of pleased I did because I think I needed to do that. But that's it for this vlog so thank you so much for watching let me know if you've read any of these books or if you've read the ones that i've recently got <laughs> let me know I think if you made it this far then let's put a pink flower in the comments below for this book it was just a delight a pink flower if you've made it this far and that is me done for the week so thank you so much for watching if you have enjoyed it please do give it that thumbs up subscribe and comment those three things are so helpful to helping this channel grow my social media links and anyone i've mentioned will be linked below and i will of course catch you in the very next video